There's the first miss of the day for Norway. They can afford very, very few. Austria don't seem to be able to do anything wrong. Well done to Varvignet of Ukraine. She's gone five with five. Kazakhstan keep their position right up there. Ranked number 10 after their performances this year. They were 14th in the championships last year. And Austria, stunning performance. I wonder how much of that is due to the fact that they picked up two medals yesterday. Team spirits very, very high in the Austrian camp. Yeah, I think that has to be a part. And uh, the Austrian team ranked 15th. They're just growing and growing in confidence, especially in the relay. Hildebrand making good places. She's up to five, only 12 and a half seconds off the leaders. Teams who have yet to make a mistake. Mike uh, Osanova of Kazakhstan going well. The Austrians have only used one spare round so far. Norway have only used one. Germany have used two. Hoenish of Poland has used two. And the Finns still in the top seven. But it's Austria, Kazakhstan, Ukraine who lead. Leg two and just uh, coming up to the halfway point of the second leg in this women's four by six kilometer relay the dead turn at the top of the climb it's a little bit awkward it's very very tight uh, we saw we've seen a couple of collisions here hildebrand going through not looking quite as comfortable as she has done in the individual races but uh, she's prepared to take on the role of leading the chasing group trying to track down the likes of japan and austria so good to see Slovenia, Grigora and they're still well in the hunt, 24 seconds behind. And Poland, Mike, uh, Hernish in sixth position. They're only 9.7 off the lead. And the Polish team, despite their ranking of seven, uh, have kept Guzik for the last leg. They needed to do that. Novakowska on the third leg. Now, she's capable of producing a brilliant performance. So, certainly, a Polish medal is possible. I think it is. Novakowska is just asking why our, our form has dropped. Uh, I know she shoots so well, but 75th in the sprint. 41st day, uh, two days ago in the individual, missing only two. And uh, I've, that's certainly what I've found out was that it appears as if she was way over training last summer so she, by october she was in great shape november great shape and she's just dropped off uh, wanting more and more success after the great success at the world champs last year well Varvignets, uh holding up the ukrainian effort very nicely fourth position to her honish of uh, poland moves up one ahead of austria's Duch, who started too fast i think on that first lap drops back into sixth place but still only seven and a half seconds off that's perhaps one spare round no more than that norway back in front with berkeland and berkeland good ski from her mike and the norwegians might start to get excited ekhoff and olsbu on legs three and four now we uh, we were lucky enough to get a ski this morning we actually went around the holman colin 50 route uh, but luckily it's three loops so you only have to, <laughs> you only have to do 16 and a half um, and, and we stopped at a couple of the tents on the way where a lot of fans are staying. It's not hundreds. There are thousands of people camping out in the woods for these championships. And uh, we've got to show around the campsite uh, at the cost of having to consume a couple of beers. Uh, really hospitable, <laughs> very enthusiastic. All of them coming up from the south of Norway. But it's how a championship should be, Mike. Uh, and, and they were so knowledgeable about all the athletes. And I think that is that is why it's so ingrained in the Norwegian culture. Cross-country skiing, biathlon, go, go out, camp in the woods and, and get, get with nature, have a good time and absolutely enjoy watching these races no matter who wins they seem to be they didn't care who wins they just want to be here and absorb this atmosphere and they had a roe deer hanging up in their tent <laughs> we're just taking a slice <laughs> off it a little bit like uh, genghis khan i still now, feel a bit ill <laughs> shoot number four here we go we're getting towards the critical stage so many teams put their weakest athlete on the third leg but the third leg is so often where the race is decided Kazakhstan on lane one, Norway lane two, Germany, Poland, Ukraine. Will the nerves settle? 
Norway slow to get the first round away but at least it is a hit as is the second Ukraine have rattled through their targets brilliant shooting from them and the Austrians keep a good shooting record here they've got to all five down with five rounds Germany go clear and the favorites starting to put pressure on the leaders now good shooting from Franziska Hildebrand Marin Hammerschmidt the youngster in the German team will certainly start to get a, a case of the butterflies now as she sees her team member charging for the line France finally clear the five the Czech Republic are clear they're another team that we should be watching out for and Russia with just thinking it's Zagarico on leg number two for Russia trying to make up for lost time from Akimova on leg one Sweden have gone clear Mike that's exciting for them Magnussen and Brawson so far Anderson and Pearson to come yeah, Sweden, I think, are very much a future team. And what about Anais Bichon? She was handed over to 101 behind. She's now 23 behind and likely to pull back another 10 seconds. So that's four shoots completed, Mike. 11 teams in the first 30 seconds. This is the tightest relay we've ever seen in those numbers. Ukraine and far vignettes leading the way. 27.56 on the clock as they left the range. The tension is building. The temperature in the Holman Collin cauldron is rising. Have a look at those leading teams. Germany, the race favourites, have finally got themselves to the front after a slow start. Varvin Yetz of Ukraine done superbly well to hold on to second place. But Crawford in third place for the Canadians. Now, the Canadians just missed out on the podium a couple of years ago uh, in Albaville, the first World Cup that was held there. I think they could, uh, could get it back. Well, the shooting certainly in the Canadian team has been outstanding and uh, the pace is outstanding. The preparation when they stayed in Canmore has obviously gone so well. Le Grand Bonnard, wasn't it? That's, Do you know, uh, my, my brain has been yeah. trying to get that name. <laughs> yeah, Le Grand Bonnard. Uh, Grand Bonnard, where the French did so badly. And the uh, World Cup Tour, incidentally, heading back there next year. Looking forward to that one because it was a, a great atmosphere. Very different from the German uh, venues. Uh, much more similar to, to out here in Oslo, actually. The spirit and the fact that so many of the spectators were active out on the tracks. And uh, that's one of the other great opportunities here. There are so many fans out skiing. All the athletes are out skiing. Uh, and lots of ch chatting, lots of interaction. Uh, out on the tracks as well very much Rosanna Crawford this is uh, the form of her life or the performance of her career to have moved forward since the shooting range she was some 12 seconds behind so passing all this traffic and now breaking away or trying to break away Beaudry and Cocker on legs three and four for Canada uh, it's great to be leading at halfway but it's even better to be leading at the finish of a race like this because things can go so horribly look wrong in the closing stages but uh, i think ransom's performance in the individual has raised the spirits of the canadian camp and they've suddenly started to believe that they can compete with the best yeah and there's sarah well just out of sight on the right sarah baudry well she was at the first ever youth olympics four years ago down in austria so she is experienced she's done very very well at junior world championships so maybe Canada has a chance here today so it's Bib 11 that leads the way into the stadium followed by Germany with Francisca Hildebrand who's done very well after her second leg and Germany still the hot favorites to win this one with Hammerschmidt and Dalmar you feel that Dalmar could start 30 seconds off the lead and still win with the form she's been showing but she will be up against Durana Bear, provided the French get back into contention. And at the moment, they're only just over 20 seconds behind. Now that margin might have grown. We'll keep an eye out for France with Anais Bescon. Must be tired from yesterday's effort in the individual. In fact, she's only 12 seconds behind now, so she's digging deep. She's bringing France right back into it. There she is. Well, that's a good comeback from Bescott. Norway with Birkeland aren't that a bit either. Ekhoff and Olsbu. Ekhoff, uh, incidentally, on two of the races so far this week, she's produced the fastest ski time. Not the fastest overall time, except for in the sprint where she won the gold. Uh, she's missed too many targets. A, a little wager on how many targets, uh, how many spare rounds Ekhoff will require. I think we're looking around uh, four. I, I would say, I hope not, I hope she can get five out of five both times, but look, ten teams within, what, a hundred meters? And so many of them have only missed two or three targets, the Ukrainians have yet to miss a target, and away they go on leg three, Elena Pedrushna 
for Ukraine. Away go Norway, Tyril Ekov, the golden girl of the sprint. What a fantastic personality she is. She did so much good for women's biathlon in the two or three hours after she won that gold medal. Uh, and uh, massively popular with the fans as well. A